Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Sloppy Joe here, or just Joe. I think we can uh, get a little bit more personal. Just Joe. Anyway, I just got back from my fun shop slash gun shop. Um, I have a new little toy. And I'm actually oddly overly excited about what this is because of what it is. It's, um, <laughs> it's something I bought purely because... Uh, I've always liked them. It's a kind of a curiosity piece for me. I've never fired one before, but I it has a purpose in mind for me. And that is going to be, we'll call it ultra conceal carry, especially come summertime. Um, I've mentioned this before in other videos where I'm a very hot running person. I'm always very warm. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's in the winter, uh, especially in the summertime. So summertime... I'm always wearing shorts, t-shirt, or shorts and a button-up shirt, or sh shorts and a polo. Uh, except for at work, I have to, you know, I have to wear pants, but uh, on my off time, um, I'm always wearing shorts. Um, and when you do that, you kind of lose a lot of ability to conceal pistols and things like that for everyday carry. So I got something that I'm kind of more out of curiosity I bought. I'm very excited about it. I'm very excited to do a full review on it. Um, I have to do a full review on several things. Uh, I planned on doing a, uh, a full range day, probably spending six to eight hours at the range filming, uh, testing uh, firearms for you guys, and giving full reviews. Um, but we had a good ski day, or I should say we had a good snowfall for this winter in Seattle, uh, any snow is good snow this year. So we had some snow in the mountains, which meant uh, Julie and I spent all weekend skiing as much as we could. So instead of doing stuff with guns and videoing, uh, I decided to go skiing for the weekend. So that's what we did. Anyway, uh, very excited about this. So what this is... And that's just papers... So, it is in this little box, and this box says Cobra Firearms. Now, some of you might already be uh, familiar with what this could be. So, for those of you who know what this is, feel free to carry along with us. And for those of you who are unfamiliar, let's, uh, let's move the camera to an overhead view, and we will do a unbox first impression, and uh, we'll go from there. So, here we go. Let's, uh, let's get to it. All right, guys, so what we've got here is Cobra Firearms. Uh, and what it is, is most of you have probably figured out by now, uh, this is a Derringer-style pistol. Uh, so let's open her up, take a look. So I'm going to flip that up that way. So I got this um, from Classic Firearms. I bought it kind of on a whim, but I've always liked Derringers. I'm, I'm a big Derringer fan, just based purely on the looks. I think they're very pretty pistols. Uh, yes, in today's world, they are not practical, um, but they can be useful, uh, amazingly because of their size, and in a 9mm, uh, because of its it, because of its firepower. Uh, frankly, when you see these, a lot of times they're 22 LR or 22 Magnum or some form of really small caliber round, but having the option now of a 9mm round that you could fire through one of these, uh, it really opens up the practical the practicality of this as a we'll call it ultra concealed uh, protection weapon. Uh, so you're limited in capacity. It is not the most practical thing in the world. You're not going to want to get into a gunfight, but chances are you're not ever going to be in a gunfight, and chances are one shot fired is going to be all that you need to do. Uh, so that all being said, it, uh, it meets the purpose that I want it for, which is to be ultra concealable. Um, summertime, I'm a very hot running person. I need to wear shorts and a t-shirt on my off time as much as possible. So you, wearing cargo shorts and a t-shirt for me eliminates wearing a mid-size compact nine millimeter, say a CZ, um, a Makarov variant weapon, anything like that, because once you throw in a holster and all that, it gets kind of hard to easily conceal those things. 
Uh, if I'm standing up and moving around, that's one thing. But if I'm sitting in a restaurant or sitting for lunch, things like that, in a crowded area that my shirt might creep up, something like that, eh, you might cause some issues. And I just would rather avoid any of those problems. So something like this fits in the palm of the hand like so. You can't see it. If I flip my hand over, it's very small, very compact. Uh, the only thing about it that was surprising was the weight. It is deceptively heavy. For a pistol so small, it does have some weight to it. I can only imagine that is to help absorb some of the snap from firing uh, 9mm ammo. So basic breakdown and operation of this pistol is very simple. So to load or unload, you've got this little lever right here. You break the lever like so. Barrel folds up or rotates up. What you would then do is you would drop your two rounds in. Now, what you want to do is if this was a 38 Special model, a 38 Special being a rimmed cartridge, you could just simply drop it in. But with this, what you need to do is you need to line up the the little extractor right here. There's a little uh, the little uh, half moon cutout right here. You want to line that up with the the gap in the cartridge here at the base. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna load and 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 close the weapon. I'm just gonna load around and show you guys. So what you need to do is you need to line it up just like so, and then the round would drop in. So that's all there is to it. So like I said, you just want to line it up and it drops in. So and then after you would fired, all you would do is then you would extract your round and pull it out. Then so let's say it was loaded, you would then close the weapon, lock the barrel down, and you're good to go. So right now it is in safe. It says push the safe. It is on safe. Push the fire. Now it's ready to fire. The way to carry this weapon, they say, is put it in safe and leave the hammer in half cock, which it is. This would be fully down. Now the reason for that is with it in half cock and the safety on, you eliminate any chance of the hammer hitting either of the firing pins. So to fire, of course, you would then fully cock the weapon. You would push for safe, or I mean, I'm sorry, push for fire, and then you would fire. Now, the trigger on this is extremely heavy, and it is, does say so in the instructions, that the trigger is very heavy, and that is purely for a safety precaution. Uh, you have to really mean to pull this trigger for it to go off. Now, in order to do so, and what I learned right out of the gate, was the trigger pull on this weapon is not like any other pistol. It is not pull straight back and it will disengage and fire the weapon. If you pull straight back, I'm, a, I'm, I'm not a small guy and I'm not a weak guy, but I'm going to pull straight back and it will not go. I'm, I'm pulling as hard as I can. And now you can see how red my fingertip is. It's, turn, it's turned purple. I was pressing so hard. <clears throat> see? It will not go. So what you need to do is you need the trigger pull needs to be directed more down at the bottom of the trigger. And instead of pulling straight back towards the back of the weapon, your trigger pull wants to be in the direction of the base of the handle. So in this direction right here. So from here, you almost want to pull like you're going to pull the trigger down to the base of the handle. And if you do that, like so, it's easy. It's not, it's heavy, but it's... <laughs> It's not impossible. It's very, it's very easy. So again, when you're doing the trigger pull, do not pull the trigger back towards the back of the weapon. It will not go. You want to direct the force at the base of the trigger, more like in this area here versus up here. And then your trigger pull, you want to go in this direction here. And if you do that, it's very easy. So that's really all there is to it with this weapon. Um, the sights, if you can see them, it's very, very, very small blade front sight. You got a little notch in the rear. I'm going to try to line this up. It is very low to the bore. Very low sights, very hard to pick up. Uh, I will probably end up doing some kind of a fluorescent paint on the tip of the, uh, of the front blade sight. Just something for my eye to pick up on. Um, other than that... That's really all there is to it. Um, initially, when I pulled the gun out of the box, I thought to myself, shoot, you know, I really should have sprung for one that was a polished nickel. But I remembered that I bought this with the intention that it is going to go into my pocket or it's going to go into my cup holder and just kind of sit in there. 
Um, and I, I got the satin finish strictly because I know it's going to get kind of marred up and banged up. And uh, if it's not staying pretty, that's fine. I don't care. Um, the only thing on it that is kind of good looking, the rose, these are rosewood grips. Um, let me see if you can pick these up in the light. But they are, uh, they're, they're a pretty grip. They're very nice. Very, they're smooth. They're nice. Very well made. Um, the pistol overall, it, it seems very well made. It's a very simple pistol. There's not much that can go wrong with it. So I don't expect anything to go wrong with it. It is 100% American made in the USA, uh, which is kind of cool. Uh, not a lot of that going on these days. Um, uh, so what it comes with, it comes with a card to get a free trigger lock. And then it comes with, I'm going to call it a warning manual. Um, I know it, there's instructions in here, but when you flip through it, you get just warning, 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 warnings, more warnings, more warnings, more warnings, more warnings. It, it, there's more warnings, more warnings, more warnings. This is all in English. I, I'm not flipping from English to Spanish to Portuguese. This is all this is all in English, and it's just you know here's some parts parts breakdown warning. It's just it's it's a warning manual. There's no action. There's some instructions with a million warnings. Um, that was <laughs> it's just I found it kind of laughable and annoying. So anyway, um, expect by the end of this week I should be able to do a full range review on this pistol. I intend to fire different weights and brands of nine millimeter. Uh, I'd like to figure out if I can uh, see if there's a pattern to manufacture or weight of the load to see if something fires uh, more accurately than something else. Uh, I'm going to be bringing out, I've got some oh, PPU 124 grain uh, full metal jacket. I've got uh, PMC bronze 115 grain full metal jacket. Some Aguila 124 grain full metal jacket. Uh, some Cellular 115 full metal jacket. I've got some Winchester uh, 147 grain, some heavy stuff, FMJ full metal jacket. I'll bring that out. And then the other thing I'm curious about is one thing some guys noted uh, on their reviews of this pistol was the brass cases after firing and trying to eject, the brass cases would expand and then it would make removing or extracting a little difficult. So I'm curious if shooting some steel case wolf um, will help with that. Uh, possibly the steel case may not expand as much as the bronze or the 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 bronze copper the uh, the brass. Wow. Uh, hopefully the, maybe the steel won't expand as much as the brass. So extracting will be maybe a little simpler. We'll see. I'll uh, I'll just include all my findings in my range report. So that's it for now. Uh, this is just a very simple out of the box video. I intend to get out and do some shooting with several uh, pistols and rifles in the next week or two and uh, do some expansion videos on those and full reviews. But that's it for now. Um, so I would say check in and I will have some uploads here soon. So far so good. Out of the box impression is nice. Uh, it's basically exactly what I expected. Again, I got it from uh, Classic Firearms. Um, I think I paid 125 and then shipping and transfer fee and I paid for it. It is not a loaner weapon. It is not given to me. It is not a sponsored weapon. I want to note that very clearly because of, uh, seems to be a lot of sponsorship stuff happening and, uh, it always seems to me sponsorship stuff starts to equate to favored reviews of things. So anyway, uh, I did get it from Classic. Um, like I said, 125 bucks. I paid for it and I'm excited to get out and fire it and give some review. So that's it for now, guys. Check in later and uh, we'll see you.